Tiv. That's on the agenda today. And um, last time I discussed with you two points about the Shittas of the Baal Shem Tiv. First of all, the, the statement that the Fidi Rebbe makes that's supposed to describe the essence of the Baal Shem Tiv's approach. Everything is godliness and godliness is everything. In the Sikhist, the Friedrich Rebbe says they, they, they mean different things. But the, the short of it is, the essence of it is, that in the teachings of the Baal Shem Tev, there isn't really two forces, good and evil. There is simply good and the absence, absence of good. Like the Rebbe describes in Tanya Perik of Tess, a war between Kedusha and Klippa is like a war between light and darkness. That was the first point we talked last time. And the second point we talked about was Emunah um, Sadikim. How in Hasidus, the role of the Tzadik is incredibly, incredibly important. There's a difference between Chabad and Chagas, but the incredible, the incredibly important place that a Tzadik plays in the way the Abish to set up his world. Now, the next thing I want to talk about in terms of the Baal Shem Tev's shittis is the concept of Rachamon Liba Boy. Rachamon Liba Boy is a Maimah Chazal that the Baal Shem Tev placed at the very, very heart, at the very, very center, at the very, very essence of his teachings, of 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 Shittas Achasidus, the Chamin Ali Yaboi, the Chamin Ali Yaboi means that Eibush leap the hearts, the Eibush loves the heart. In other words, what matters most is how sincere something is, as opposed to how uh, grand something may be. You know, the Baal will very often quote the Maimon Chazal, Echad Amar Bev, Echad Amamit. It doesn't matter how much or how little we give the Eibush did, or Bovachi Yechavan as Libil Ava Veshabash Amayim. The important thing is that what you do, you should do. With an emes. You should do you should do sincerely. If you look in the Tzavah Sarivash, Hashem Tzavah very frequently this piskam comes up again and again and again. Rachamon lo liba boy. The Rebish to leap the hearts. The Rebish to loves the heart. The most important thing is the sincerity and the emes of a person. And there are so many stories that are so famous that reveal the idea of Rachamon lo liba boy. I already told you the story with Kukri Kuhan. The Fidik Rebbe tells the story in the Sikh. Kukri Kuhan where Vesach, the Baal Shem Tev had a gzeda, he couldn't be mevatlet, and a, and, a, and a farm boy, a shepherd, screamed out, Matangans and Hansen, Kukiriku Hon, on Yom Kippur, the Baal Shem Tev's base medrash, and with mevatl gzeda, because he meant it metanemis. You know, when I was a child, I used to read the back of the tillum. I didn't really know Hebrew very well. So I used to look for the Yiddish, I must have read the back of the tillum a hundred times, because I spent my childhood waiting for my father to finish davening. So there's one page here, that begins with the word an oistzug for nasiche. I didn't know what oistzug meant. Oistzug means an expert excerpt. An oistzug for nasiche. It tells a story how there was a gzeda once, and the Baal Shem Tev went through. Or the gzeda's kloya, a decree that we're going to kill the Chumash in the community of Jews. And the Baal Shem Tev called together his chaveid and his tzaddikim to start him. Reb Martchai and Reb Kohos, these were big, big tzaddikim from the very early years of the Baal Shem Tev, to be mitakes eitzah hadakim and vatal this gzeda. And the Baal Shem Tev saw that this is a closed deal. There's no way he can be vatal this gezeda. So the Fidikim writes, on his way back through the Hecholus, Baal Shem Tev was traveling in the heavens. He came to a particular Hechol, a particular room, a particular place in Gan Eden, And he saw a very big light. So he asked, to whom did this light belong? And they told him it belongs to a Pasha Terida Baal a simple man who... Who was a laborer? What he did, whatever he did, he was a posh, a simple poor person, who used to say till him all day long. When he did his work, he said till him. When he cleaned his stable, he said till him. I even think he said till him in places that Rabbi Allah you're not allowed to say till him. But he posh didn't know. And by Meshach a day he would finish the till him five times, every day. So the Hashem to track this yid down, and he came to this yid. And he came to this yid and he said to him, if you knew that you had the care to be mevatel against yidin, with your amidah's tilim, would you agree 
to give away this chus to be mevatel the gzeira. He said, of course. The hagzeira and his batla. I thought the story finishes. I pushed the yid was saying till him. He said till when he went to the bathroom. He said till when he was cleaning horse manure. He pushed it didn't know better. But he said, "Mit ganzen Herzen, the gezeira is kloyer, Rachman of Sadi. The creed that could have wiped the whole community to the face of the earth, and the gezeira that the Baal Shem Tov himself, Baal Shem Tov himself, was not able to be mizbat mavatel, and the pasha to yid with his tmimus was able to mavatel. That's what Rachman the liba boy. The most important thing is the sincerity. And like I said to you before, there's so many stories, so many famous stories about Rachman the liba boy, and one of those stories." is the story about the parents of Reb Zusha and Reb Melech. The story of Reb Zusha and Reb Melech Melezhenski. Reb Zusha and Reb Melech Melezhenski. Their father's name was Reb Eliezer Lippa. Is it the case? Reb Eliezer Lippa was a posh of Yid. And what he did for a living was that he was a water carrier. I said he was a water carrier. And uh, the way water carrying business worked, there were a number of water carriers in town. And there were routes that you either inherited or that you purchased or that you established. And this was your, these were your rights. And if you had a better route, what does that mean? If you brought water to the people who were well-to-do, you get paid better. If you had a poorer route. In other words, you brought water to the poor neighborhoods, the poor people in town. So you were poorer than the poor people who were supporting you. The most difficult route of all was the one who had to bring waters to the shuls. Because the shuls come, they pay. The shuls had no haknosa, no itza, and so forth. And Rebbe Leezer Lippmann had a good route. He had a very good route. He was bringing water to the three or four gvirim in town, and he had nice panos. A nice panasa for a water carrier meant that he pushed it, didn't starve, and that his roof didn't leak, Mr. Abbe. So he believe me, nobody was getting rich in the old shtetl. One day, a tzaddik came to town, and he spoke about the idea of Rahman al boy. He was tired by the Mebish Naif and Ahatz. And he brought the Medrash in Vayikra. The Shah Vayikra tells the story that there was a man who had a minig, a rich man, that every year he used to bring the Abish that Hashem Mufutam. He would take one ox from his herd, who was a rich man, he would put it into a special uh, barn, special stable, and he would fatten it up, and he would make sure that it wouldn't become a Balmum, and so forth and so on. And he would bring this behemoth to the base of Mikdash as a Karm, Karm Shlomit. It was a big event. The whole family used to come. They used to march through the streets of Yerushalayim. They would come into the Beis Hamikdash and they would celebrate. You know, like he doesn't say it. Be happy yourself. Make others happy and so forth and so on. One year he's going to Yerushalayim with his behemoth. And he comes to the foot of the Harabayis. And the animal suddenly stops. Now of course, as you probably know, the Beis Hamikdash was the was the opposite of Lubavitch. <laughs> the day started very early and finished very early, as opposed to Vachul of Adal. By midday, it's already late. You know, as soon as the Yerakim Karb Tabach Shemayin Ayim, and the day the show's over, finished. So this Gvir is in a panic. His behemoth refuses to move. Half Yerushalayim is standing around trying to push this behemoth and pull this behemoth and drag the behemoth. It's finished. A man is coming home from a day's work. A Oiskiris and another man is carrying some celery, some grass which is food pushed for his family for that day, so they're going to eat. And he walks by, and he sees the behemoth and the situation. So he does what any person with common sense would do. He offers the behemoth the grass, and now the behemoth reaches for it, so he makes a step back, another step back. He walks the behemoth into the Harabayas, and into the Azara, and he gives away his family supper, and he goes home. The Gvir shechts his behemoth, and he has his feast, and he's so happy, and he drinks wine, and he eats meat, and he's mamash. In gratitude to the Abish for all the many wonderful things he gives him, including the fact that the Abish today sent a yid who helped him schlep his behemoth to the base of Mikdash and so forth. That night he has a dream that the Abish is letting him know that the grass from the poor person was tastier than his share before him. That the Abish enjoyed more that little bit of celery than his behemoth with his wine, with his celebration with the Gans and the Mises. 
So the Hashem Tev brought out the point of Rachamon Aliba boy. It doesn't matter how much you give. In this case, the, the, the key is the sincerity and the emes. So the Rabbi Lazar Aliba of the head, but you have to give the Abish there, whatever you give the Abish there. So he came home to his wife, who was an equal set conscience to him. And the two of them conferred with the Durakirat. He discussed everything with his Balabasta, with his wife. And they talked it over what they could do to give something to the Abishtad. And the Bayezer Lipman decided that he's going to do a Maisa. He came to the water carrier who was responsible to bring water to the shuls. And the water carrier had to bring water to the shuls was much poorer than he was because it was the worst route in town. And he says to him, Let's trade routes. I'll give you my three or four gvidim, whatever it was that he had, and you'll give me the three or four shuls, because in his mind it was more important that he should be Makayim, this Indian, of Rachamon, Aliba boy, to serve the Abish, that they have more panasim. Now actually the other water carrier thought the guy lost his mind, but he was very, certainly very, very happy to agree, and they changed routes. So now the Blazer Lipman, instead of bringing water to the four richest Jews in town, is bringing water to the four poorest contracts, as it were, him and his wife, they didn't have any children. They lived as a simple. And, thank uh, God. Anyway, one Friday afternoon, he goes to the well and he draws water and he sees in the water a fish. So he thinks to himself, Mamish, this is a windfall. When was the last time I had fish on Shabbos? And I'm thunder from the Mabish. So you shake the fish. So of course, the fish he brings home to his wife and says, we have what to eat for Shabbos. And he does his rounds. He comes home after his rounds. He walks into the house and his wife is pushed in tears. She's crying and she's upset. And she says to her husband, I don't know what the Abishta wants, but the Abishta is giving us unbelievably terrible Nesoyinus. And I'm so afraid that we're going to chas v'shom fail this Nesoyin. Frek he says to his wife, what? what are you talking about? She says, look, he opens up the fish. And there's a diamond in the fish. It was worth an awful lot of money. And her whole attitude was, Oi, God forbid we'll see, keep the diamond. The design got nothing. The Rebish is giving us tests. How are we supposed to survive these tests? So he was also an ice man. <laughs> what are you going to do? So they put the diamond away till after Shabbos. Motsar Shabbos comes to Leif and Zimurov. And both of them are so upset. God forbid the diamond should be in the house an extra minute. Can the choyz kumah that they're going to be a ganif? And the Rav hears them out. The Rav smiles at them. And the Rav says, you know, like Yosef said to, the Yosef Mishodis said to his brothers, yeah. He says, this is Mizute Nohar. Even if it would have a simon, it would be yours. It's legit. A diamond and a fish, you can keep. The Ebishter gave you an Ashiris. And the Abishter wants to give you brachas v'hatzlachas. Take the diamond and sell it. And live image. But they didn't trust this at all. <laughs> he wasn't enough of a rabbi. <laughs> Any rabbi who was mad to take this diamond, they couldn't accept this. Anyway, they were overcome the Nisayan. They sold the diamond. They gave every dime away to stuck. One of them, got the three kinder. First Rebbe Lamelech was born. Then I think it was five years later, the Brusha was born. And the Fidi Kebbe tells in detail how the Melch went to Yeshiva. And they started getting the Sudas tapes and Mizat Slok and Limit Atere. And so forth. And what's the Yisod? The Fidi Kebbe tells the story about Riches and the Rishimis. It's in Sefer Amorim Tafishin Yud Aleph. The Toichan of the Sipur is, Rachamon or Liba Boy, the Ikir is the Erenskite and the Tmimus. That's more important than anything else. There's another story. I don't know the story of Genoi. I don't know the story of Bediok. But the Toich and the Sipur is a very similar Toich. That the Baal once came to a place and he said, the Rechamon Oliva boy, the Rebish to leave the hearts. Rebish to leave the hearts. And the say that the Baal of course, was, as we all know, he would go to the markets where he knew Yidin would gather. The Baal wanted to meet people. How could you meet substantial numbers of people in, in, in a world where everybody lived in little villages and dead fit, all spread out? You would come to the market days, and the market days people would gather. And he would come to the market, the Chavrai Kaddish would come to the market, he would get up on a box or on a, st- a stone or on a cart, and people would gather around, and he would speak to them. So the big people gathered, and the Baal Shem Tev was, t- was talking to the people. 
Hata de detailed this Maim Chazal, the Chamon Oliva boy, but Bashem Tev had all many, many stories, Midrashim and so forth, which Bashem Tev would tell and dramatize to bring out to the people the Taira Kaidveir, you know, the Cheshivas that they have and so forth. So he was standing in the market and he was telling the people, Chamon Oliva boy, there's a large crowd of people. One of the people standing far away could barely hear what the Bashem Tev was saying. The only words he heard was the Rebish to leap the heart. He heard those, the Rebish loves the heart. He didn't think too much. He comes home to his wife and he says to his wife, he says, I have an inside scoop. The Rebish still loves the heart. Okay, so Thursday when they went to the, to the butcher to buy meat for Shabbos, she orders the heart. Now you guys never learned yet a day. Eh? One day you learned yet a day and maybe you'll even remember some of it. Yeah? The lave is she. Kashering the heart is Nisha Zepashit because it's very smooth. The blood, the salt slips off. You have to, whatever, you have to cut it. If you add it, the whole say they had the heart. But most people don't eat the heart. Eating a heart is eating chewing gum without flavor. It's a muscle. <laughs> yes. And they, it's probably not legal even to sell today in America. But in the old country, you can get pretty much any part of the behemoth as long as it was kosher. So she asked the butcher for the heart. The butcher thought she was strange, but he's heard stranger requests. Anyway, she took home the heart. They cashed it. And she roasted it. She made two chalas. And he snuck into the shul letter of Shabbos. Nobody was in shul. And he put it down in case. He comes to Shul on Friday night, and it's gone. So he comes home to his wife, and he tells his wife, Hezekhanamai said, the Rebishter took it. What happened? The Shamash was a poor man, came to Shul before Shabbos, and he smelled uh, food. He followed his nose. He found it in Oren Kedish, and he thought to himself, the Rebishter sent me food straight from heaven. So he's feeding the Rebishter, and he's happy about it. He's being fed directly by the Abishtad, and he's happy about it. It's a myself. This went on for weeks. He would bring it, put it, he would sneak into the base Medrash, put it on Kedish. The Shamash would come. He already knew, out of Shabbos, the Abishtad is going to send him for Shabbos, Tzvei Chalas Mutahat. Of course, the Rav eventually got wind of it. And the Rav called this Poshetarid. And he asked him, what kind of craziness is this? So he told him, what do you mean? I heard from a, a Rav, from a Darshan, from a Magid. That he said that Abish the leap the hearts. And the Rav plots. I mean, you fool, you idiot, you you the Michael Omanik. Wait, you think he meant that you should buy a heart of a behemoth and roast it, put it on in Kadesh? And he tried to explain to him what's my anyway, of course he devastated this man at the at the Mgansin And obviously the next Friday in the Oran Kadesh there was no heart, there was no chalas. Story's over. So the Rav has a cholum. And the chalem was that he, I think he was going to lose his life because he deprived the Eibishter from the nachas ruach that the Eibishter got from the tmimus, from the sincerity with which this person placed the heart in Darun Kedish and the nachas ruach that, the, that he got from the shamish thinking that the Eibishter directly is bringing him his food. Now, you know, to be such an ish poshet, you cannot bluff, you know. Tmimus, either you have it or you don't have it. This, these were very simple people. For a person to actually believe, you put chalas and a heart into Aron Kedish, maybe she eats it. This is a madreig of pshitus and tmimus, which is very, very interesting. Very, very special. But what's important is the emis, you know. Okay, you're more sophisticated, you're more enlightened. Not necessarily are you more spiritual, not necessarily are closer to the truth. But the constant is this tmimus, this Eden sky, this emis sky, to Zabal Shemtev's, but the Basham is the highest thing is. And this is what he would tell people all the time. You never know. Vedas Gress, it says in Tanya, Mi Yedea, Kutulasanam, Alasan, Bishar Shubhukhele, Bezim Chayim. You want to talk about Neshamas? Who has a bigger Neshama? Who's closer to the Ebishter? Mi Yedea, who knows? Maybe the Pasha to Yedea is a bigger Neshama, it's closer to the Ebishter. And the big Tamad Chacham, the big London, Vesach is learning Tere Shalei Lishma, and so forth and so on, is Bechal not in the same place. And there's a Rebu Yisipurim. One of the stories, which, which I, I, I think I told it to you already, but I'm not certain. But I want to tell it to you again. It's also in the back of the Tillim. It's a story that the Tzamech Tzedek heard from the Alter Rebbe. That the Alter Rebbe heard the story from the Mezitcher Magen. And it brought out this point of Tmimus. It brought out this, tmim, this point of Tmimus. The Mezitcher Magid, as I'll explain to you later, was from the last of the Tzadikim, the Talmidim, to come to the Heilig of Baal I just want you to know that it says in the Rebbe Zasiche, not in the Fini, but in the Rebbe Zasiche, that the Baal Shemtev's Neshama had to come into this world to do with Shlichus 
For the Baal Shem Tov, had always given Poel, but my love that they should give him Shishim Giboy. Baal Shem Tov didn't want to be alone. No. So he asked that Mormad, they should give him 60 Tzadikim who should stand with him. And it also says that the Baal Shem Tov had said to the Magid, that you're going to get Pishnai and Beruchi, you get twice as much as me. Like Eliyahu and Navi said to Elisha ben Shafat, Elisha ben Shafat was Eliyahu and Navi from Malamokim. And it says in Chazal, based on Psukim, that everything Eliyahu and Navi had, Elisha ben Shafat got twice. Eliyahu and Navi was Mechayim Mason once, Elisha ben Shafat was Mechayim Mason twice, and so forth. So the Mizitcha Magid got twice as many, and the Mizitcha Magid, 120 Tzadikim that were his. The Mizitcha Magid, 120 Tzadikim. The Elikah Baal Shem Tev had 60 Tzadikim. And the Baal Shem Tev, in contrast to the Magid, and perhaps this I'm going to talk about later on, was involved directly uh, with everybody. In other words, the Baal Shem Tev didn't s- see himself as a tzaddik. He saw the oilam. And as a result, he was involved only with big people who would in turn be involved with small people. This Hanhagid the Magid had. The Mizitcha Magid was very different than the Baal Shem Tev. The Mizitcha Magid was involved only with tzaddikim. The Mizitcha Magid involved with what Anoshim Shutim was through his Talmidim. The Mizitcha Magid himself, the Chlal did not just with Sadiqim. But the Baal Shem Tov was a very different Seder. The Baal Shem Tov was directly involved, spent incredible amounts of time with Pash Dimensh, simple people, listening to them and talking to them and, and, and you know, hearing their tzaddis and so forth and so on. So the Maggid says, it was a Friday night, the Baal Shem Tov, Maggid came to Baal Shem Tov Sachakal eight years before the Baal Shem Tov was installed. He says the Chavraya Kaddisha was almost complete. In other words, the Baal Shem Tov had an army of tzaddikim around him. And it was a golden tish, you know, about Shemta's tish. You saw who was sitting by the table, these were Matuke Eretz, giants, sat around Shemta's table. And of course, all around, and you stand there, and Shutim, there's dozens, scores, hundreds of people, I don't know how many. You know, our Hasagis of what Shemta's Dismedish, Shemta's Dismedish was probably much, much smaller than this room, in that everything was of a claim of them. And Shemta is from Beresha Shulchan. And the Chavrai Kedisha is sitting around, and it's noisy, it's hectic. People are coming and people are going. People are walking over to the Baal Shem Tev, and they're watching the Anhog of the Helech of Baal Shem Tev. He says, from one he gives a piece of fish to eat from his fish. At fate to get to him to make Kiddush of his Becher. He gives him his own Becher to make Kiddush. Push it, trust the people. I mean, their Amaratas were Shalai Be'erech, today's Amaratas. You have no idea. But such sincere, wonderful, sincere, beautiful Jews. And the Maggid says, we were thinking to ourselves, Hashem Tov gets a chop the Zohar Zohar. Hashem Tov is wasting his time on such trivialities. The Hashem Tov could be involved in so much more lofty and sublime in Yonim. And look what he's busy with. He's busy with Hashem Shut and Pras and Mention and so forth. This is what they were thinking. Naturally, they didn't say anything to the Hashem Tov. But this is what they were thinking in their hearts. Why is he spending so much time with these pushed people? Anyway, the Seder by the Baal Shem Tov was as follows. Friday night was open to the public. Shabbos afternoon was open to the public. But my, Yom Shabbat, the second suit of Shabbos, the, the Tish of Shabbos day, was only for the Chavrai Kaddish. So it's Shabbos afternoon, and the Chavrai Kaddish is sitting around, I think they tell the Maggid, and we sang the Gunim. And the Baal Shem Tov said, Tere. And the whole matzah was merumim. The whole mood was so uplifted and so pure and so peaceful and so sublime. And it crossed our minds, says the Magid. Oh, this is how the Baal Shem Tov's tish look. It's not a market. I mentioned kumen, I mentioned game. Give a kufu da tutzach, da zitzmen, da fabrenkmen, da tutzach dvarim gdeilim, and so forth. And we were thinking to ourselves that if only the Baal Shem Tov would be involved with, only with us, you know, this would be as a, you know, or to speak in the modern language, he wouldn't have any misnagdim, you know. Suddenly, the Baal Shem Tev opens up his eyes and looks at us and he tells us, I want all of you to take your right hand and put it on the shoulder of the Talmud city next to you to create a circuit. But now, I want you to close your eyes and not open them until I tell you to open your eyes. And that they should sing, I think, three nigunim. He told them what three nigunim to sing. After they finished singing the three nigunim, Hashem took his hand, his right hand and his left hand, 
and he put it on the shoulders of the Talmud sitting on the right side and the Talmud sitting on the left side. As soon as the Bashem have completed the circuit, says the Magad, we heard what was going on in the Bashem Tev's base Medrash during that time. What was going on in the Bashem Tev's Shtibul at that hour? So many people, the Balim Malacha, the Anashim Pshutim, had come to the Bashem Tev for Shabbos. They knew Shabbos Day, they're not welcome. There's no business. So they went to the base Medrash to say, Till. And the Magad describes, Mr. the Hishtap Hanefesh, the sincerity, the the genuineness with this, these Pasha Talmidim were saying Tilim. It's on page 196 in the Tilim. It says, uh, It's obvious these people knew the title of the Tilim. Yeah. <laughs> I give out this a footer in Himmel. Yokim or the Kim, your foot to wave off. Tire the tate, gum tipe motabias. Liebe footer, the bottom the katate, shuva, shuvenu, the kay, shade of Kasri. It tells a very push of what they were saying. So the musician Maggie says, We heard these people saying to them, and we were filled with a bush of pneumis. We were so embarrassed, so ashamed. Because we realized that these simple people, their simplicity, are closer to the Abisha than we are with all of our kavanas. Are closer to the Abisha than we'll ever be with all of our kavanas. And we, we understood that when the Bashantav is Makar of Apostarid, it is the far, you know, it's the Bashantav is Makar of Apostarid because Fan was the Makar of Zan, you know. So the Maggit finishes the story by saying that after this Shabbos, I felt very self-conscious. I felt very, very bad. Why did I feel bad? I felt bad because because I was Mahara Nacharabi. How could it be that I would suspect the Halakha Baal Shem to do something that was not correct? If the Baal Shem Tev, the Chag, the Zerach, and Roshim Shutim, this itself was the biggest Raya that I say, Dafa Zerfin. And I felt very, very bad about it. And for a long time I was bothered. I was bothered how you talk and I doubted my Rebbe. I did the Mesitra Magad gives up. How you talk and I doubted my Rebbe. A kid said, until one day I had a dream. This is all the Mesitra Magad telling the Alter Rebbe. I'll tell you what he said. He says, in my dream, I saw a cheder. And the Muhammad was Mesha Rabbeinu himself. And he was learning with the children, Parshas Vayera. I'm sorry, Parshas Lech Lecha. When Hashem tells Avram Avinu, he's going to have a son, it's of a Yipal, Avram, Alpon of a Yitzchak. Avram Avinu fell on his face and he laughed. Now Rashi says he laughed from joy. But Moshe Rabbeinu says Avram Avinu laughed because he didn't believe the Ebishter. He laughed, he didn't believe it was possible. So one of the children raises his hands and says to Moshe Rabbeinu, the Rebbe, how could Avram Avinu doubt the Ebishter? So Moshe Rabbeinu answers him, Afilu guf kodesh basaru. He says, he says, Avram Avinu had a guf. And his guf was taka guf kodesh, a holy body. But afilu guf kodesh basaru. Even a holy body is still physical. And because even a holy body is physical, it's possible even Avram Avinu should doubt the Abish. And nocha daite, he felt bad. The Magad got an answer to his preoccupation. Hayy tochen was mahara nacharabe. There's a story which I don't remember the details of. But the Tzadrich HaSasipa, the Nekud HaSasipa is that the Bashem when he was still a Nistir, traveled to a certain shtetl. And he saw the Yohan Navi, he saw the Yohan Navi, the Ponim Tzuhulis, with a beautiful face. And the Bashem Tev told the Maisa, Bashem told the story himself. He said, Bashem Tev, I was used to seeing the Yohan Navi. I was a member of the Chavrai, the Tzadik in the Storim. And when I was around the other Tzadik in the Storim, he said that the Chavrai said, May it, the old Tzadik in the Storim. He had seen Eliyahu, but he's never seen Eliyahu Novi alone. Here he was out up in a field. And he went out into this field to do meditations, to do his bondanus, and he sees Eliyahu Novi out in the field. Eliyahu Novi is glowing. And Eliyahu Novi tells him, in this shtetl, there's a, there's a, a couple. The face was Elisha something, and... Uh, and, uh, and uh, Alter Eva, I forgot the names of the couple. He says, he says, you are sitting out here, undu matasech, you're struggling to be miyachid yichudim, you ankle for the Ebishter. And this young couple, with their galeb, the Ebishter, dying to buy the Elam, they would push the people, 
who were constantly praising the Abishtid, they don't have any issues. And they're going a thousand miles further than you'll ever go without knowing any meditations and any madrigas and any yechudim. It's very Their Ava Hashem brings them in touch with the Abishtid more than you're working so hard and getting no place and them without any effort they're going further than you. It's this idea of the Aliba boy. And this was everything by the Baal Shem. The Emes this is everything by Hasidim. It says, I'm Tanemis. And I want to tell you a story. This, 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 the Kamas Yipur, this is a Moedim de Kamais. The Emes is a Taka Moedim de Kamais. Talking about a Noshim Pshutim. There was a Tkufa when the Baal Shem Tev was very Tzibroch. She was very, very depressed, very upset. Very Tzibroch. And... The Chavraya Kadishi were trying to raise his spirits to cheer him up. And there was nothing to talk about. They were Pasha depressed. The was Pasha depressed. And I, I want to make something clear. By Tzadikim, there's no such thing as a depression. The Altair says in Tanya, depression comes from Klippa. By Tzadikim, there's such a thing called a Stalka Samoichin. A Katna Samoichin, whatever that means. I mean, we should have Baal Shem Tev Katna Samoichin. What does Echad give And one day, a Pasha Tayyid walks into Baal Shem Tev and the Baal Shem Tev walks up to him and he sits down next to this, to this Pasha Tayyid and he starts to shmoos them he starts to shmoos them, them, shmoos them and the Baal Shem Tev gets involved in a conversation with this very very simple man on a level that was equal he talked to him about his farm and about his goats and about his chickens and the Baal Shem Tev sat there talking to this unbelievably Pasha Tev person and enjoyed the conversation he talked to Mama Shoba Bishoba, like two buddies engaged in it. And they watched the Baal Shem Tev come out of his heaviness. The Baal Shem was enjoying this conversation with this Pasha to eat. I mean, this man was Bachlal, not Chaveda, but Tedib, and Mitzvah. He wasn't in the same universe as the Baal Shem Tev. And the Baal Shem Tev was obviously Pasha enjoying his company. This Pasha enjoying his company. They fabrained for a Meshach's man. And then this man left. And the Baal Shem Tev was in a good mood. So the Chavraya Gadish came to the Baal Shem Tev. And they said to the Baal Shem Tev, He says, you know, we, we're watching you. You've been so down, he says. And here you are sitting with him, fabrenging with him about his goats and his chickens and his wagon and his axles. Like as if this is mamish, you know, He says, ah, who is, the, you know, me who am Who is this person that was able to, he was like, bring you out of your mamad and matzav? So the Baal Shem Tev tells him the following story. I think this is incredible. He says, this man is a very simple man, a very poor man. And every year he puts aside pennies to buy an esrik. For a whole year he saves mamish pruto pruto mitzarefes. Small, small quantities of money. Puts them into a, a box, to a bag. And before sukkahs he buys a very nice esrik. And of course, his wife is not thrilled with it. They're poor people to start with. And here he is, in quotes, wasting good money on an esri. And I think that year they needed the money for something very, very important. To make a shidduch to us, drink a gelt. But he put aside his money for the esri. And uh, he bought him from a beautiful esri. And his wife came to him and said, you have to sell the esri. And you have to take the money and use it for the cause that they had. Whatever that cause was, they pushed it needed a few dollars. And he refused. She got so upset at him that she grabbed the yesterday and she bit off the pitten. She made the yesterday possible. Kum that not you have an yesterday and not you have the money. So this yid had a trach ketan. This yid thought for a moment and he said to himself, is a raya as min ashamayim I am not roy to use such an yesterday. It's, it's proof from the heavens that I'm not fit to use such an yesterday. And that was the end of that. He didn't get upset at his wife. He didn't scream at her and so forth. So the Baal Shem Tev said about this Yid, that this Nesoyen that he had, this Nesoyen that he had, his wife, you know, he spent all that money. The money was spent. Yeah. His wife wanted him to sell the Essek and he refused. So she passed the Essek, you know, no Shidduch for our daughter, no Essek for Sukkot. And he did not get upset at the Baal Shem Tev. Oh, this man had a Nesoyen, that was bigger than the Nesoyim when Avraham Avinu took Yitzchok to the Akedah. That's right there. The Baal Shem Tev measured. He said, this man had a Nesoyim that was bigger than the Nesoyim that the Baal Shem Tev had when he took 
But Avram Avinu has to get that kaidah. He says, because, so, so, "Is it a surprise by you that this person has such an influence on me?" And I, I, I could talk. There's so many stories. The Bashat was once sitting bamtish. Bashat was once sitting bamtish pesach from Said. and uh, also he was not in such a freilach mood. Umitamol hot the Bashat of Alachkitan. Should have laughed. <laughs> so they asked him, "What was he laughing?" So the Bashat said that there's a couple agizvu, a husband and a wife, they have no children. Very simple. He says, so they got together the matzah and the wine and the mother and the chareses and the chazeres and the katas. But he didn't know how to make a seder. So he sat down, him and his wife. They drank four cups of wine. <laughs> they ate a few chazeres and matzah. They ate katas, chareses, chazeres, and they ate. They finished eating, you understand? So after drinking four cups of wine and all the rest, they were mamish and a matzah mu'ula. And they looked at each other and said, what are we supposed to go do now? So he got up and he danced with his wife. He danced. And the Baal Shem Tev laughed because the Baal Shem Tev saw the incredible nachas ruach l'mayla that the Ebesh got from this dancing. Which is the emes kai, the t'mim is shepherdavit. This was by the Baal Shem Tev a very, very big thing. Rachman Aliba boy. What is important to understand, and I'm going to finish with this point, is we all tell the stories of Anashim Pshutim. And the Rachamon Aliba boy Benashim Shutim. But by the Bashemtiv, in addition to the Rachamon Aliba boy, the Anashim Shutim, the Bashemtiv wanted that the biggest tzaddikim should reveal within themselves the same Rachamon Aliba boy. In other words, every person, and whatever level he is, of course, if you could learn more Teda, you have to learn more Teda. If you could serve the Abish that Ahaya Madrege, so the Abish Ahaya Madrege. But the key is not how demonstrative it is, how announced and how revealed and how showy it is, but how emesdik it is. And this is what the Chavraya Kaddish got from the Baal Shem Tev. People came to the Baal Shem Tev. What did they want to get from the Baal Shem Tev? They wanted to get this Midas Emes. I'm going to tell you a story now. I was planning to tell it to you later, but I'll tell it to you now. And I'm going to finish with the Sipur. The story is the Yudl Chitrix Mises. And I, I want you to know a Kalal. And as I get older, I understand it better. A Hasidish story needs a very good source. Because... There were people who made a living making up stories. There were people, we know who they are even, who wrote whole books of Sipurit Tzaddikim was on a Nish Gishtag and Nish because Sipurit Tzaddikim was such a bestseller, such a hot item in Pale and Galicia. It was Pushta Panosa. And you had people, some of them were even Apakurs in Pushta, you know, they didn't even care. It was Pushta Panosa. They had once been from. And then they fried out and they continued making a living. They wrote stories under pseudonyms, under pen names, and they used to eat them up alive. And a lot of these stories have found their way into the Meseda, and the Porsche Boba Mises. So the, that's why the Rebbe was so careful, you know. The head for Shred. If, if he didn't hear a story from Friedrich and Rebbe, you know, it, 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 you can't you know. The Rebbe was so particular about this. And as I get older, I, 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 I understand it better because I see it. I see it. But this is a story that Yudel Chitik detailed that Gehad Fazanim Ashpir. How did the Toldos Yankov Yasef become a Chosid? Toldos Yankov Yasef. Toldos Yankov Yasef is one of the first Tzadikim to come to the Baal Shem Tov. If the Magad was from the last, the Toldos was from the first. Ayyidit Megizak Tapaylisha, that the Toldos Yankov Yasef was almost 20 years older than the Baal Shem Tov. Toldos passed away. He was 100 years old, or over 100 years old. He said, he's a tough kuf mem, tough mem. Anyway, how did the Toldo become a, a chassid of Baal Shem Tev? He says, the Baal Shem Tev used to go to the markets. The Toldo was obviously, he was the Rav and the Mechich, he was the Rav and the Magad in Pulno, and a few other shtetalach around. And every Rav had a few jobs. You know, you were a Rav of five or six cities. And you'd go from place to place. So the Baal Shem Tev came to this shtetl, and he went into the market, Urgrim for bringing him in the mensch. It was early, early in the morning, very, very early. For talk, people were gathering for the market. And the Baal Shem Tev came and he for bringing him in the mensch. Now they had, of course, a minion Vasikin, like it says in the Mishnah, like the Din is, they davent. What's the Lushen? The game re im honey tachama. You should start, you should finish Krishna when the sun comes up. And the Seder was that the Toldus Yankov Yesu would come to the Bismedrish, daven Vasikin. And as things are in the shtetl, you put towels and fill on in your house, and you walk through the simtois, the clean alleys, which the towels and fill to the shul. And the Toldos was used to, he came into the shul, the shul was full of people. As soon as the Rav would walk in, he walks into the shul, the shul is empty. 
So he's sitting there with his Talsin Tzvil and his Shamish. He's waiting for people. Trachten, maybe the Shoban Klap at Fashlofen. They had the Shoban Klap. You know what the Shoban Klap means? Shoban means shutters. Someone would go and knock on the shutters and say, You know, the, the beautiful, innocent era of the shtetl. The Shoban Klap at Fashlofen. No, the Shoban Klap at Nish Fashlofen. He woke everybody up. Anyway, they told us, gets very upset. He sends his Shamish. He says, go find the people and tell them that it's Heper Kovad. I tell you that they're making the enough weight. Anyway, the Shamish goes out of the shul and disappears. Doesn't come back. So now the Rav is really furious. So he gets up himself. He's looking where the people are. He sees in the middle of the market, the whole town is there. Half of them are already waiting thousand for them. Shteit ta'yib ta'yit ta'yit Und dashnit. The Baal had a magnetism. The Baal was not just the average market. He was get like kait alein. He drew people to him like flies. And the shteit and ret and kocht. The Toldus walks up to this gathering with the intent of, you know, putting the fear of God into these people. A chutzpah. What kind of nonsense? Who is this guy, Bechlau? And the Rav should sit and wait because some fellow showed up and he's telling stories. But as he gets closer to this gathering, he starts to hear what the Baal Shem Tov is saying. And he listens. And this is what drew the Toldus to the Baal Shem Tov. That the Baal Shem Tov the Maitz, I think, with two Yidin Shechenim, Jews' neighbors. One of them was a poshetarid, a poor man, who worked very, very hard to make a living. You have no hasagah, but made working hard. Sunday morning, he would leave his house with a bag full of nonsense, schreder, needles, red buttons, patches. And they were going a ganze walk in the desert. A whole week he was in the villages. He didn't come home from Shabbos to Shabbos. Who was he meeting? Shiksas, Goyesha women and men, selling them junk, you understand, to make Bamish a few pennies to feed his family. He would find a place where he could spend the night by a yidah. But he spent his week walking. A whole week he walked. The man spent hours and hours and hours walking on his feet to bring home lechem chukai, a piece of bread to his family. Naturally, you know, he wasn't the Tzadik Goma. Maybe he was the Tzadik Goma. Friday, he came to the shtetl early. He went home, and he brought his wife the money that he earned. He put on his knapsack of junk. To the mikveh, to the merchitz. He washed himself. He put on Shabbos Yikla. He went to the mikveh, put on Shabbos Yikla. He was the first people in Shul. But his body was absolutely battered. It's a brachan of shtick. He would sit down, he would fall asleep. People gathered. I say, you come and say, Yid, Zagna Shir. I say, he wanted to be by the Shir, but he knew he was going to fall asleep, so he would stand. In fact, the Shlaf and stay in the Gerait, he would sleep standing up. Shabbos morning, he came again to show. So anyway, he came home Friday night. He made Kiddush for his family. After he ate the Kazai's challah, he was sleeping by the table already. No koyach, his goof was used up. Shabbos morning, he came to shul. <laughs> he, he slept through davening. He wanted so much to be a yid. He would come to Shir and Yankif, standing up for the shlofa they stay in the Gerit. He had a neighbor. His neighbor was a Baruri in the Talmud Chacham Abenteire, who married a girl from a Mashpacha Amida, from a Mashpacha with Hachpanosa. And he sat, Yorin of Kes, for many years he sat and learned by his Shred and Shvigis, where he didn't have to work with Chlau. Then he took the money that he got as a dower, as a Naden, and he invested it. And he was mamish, of forgotten to light. He had Panosa Berevach from his investments and from his business, which his wife was running. And he sat and learned, and he gave Shiyudim, and he taught people Teda, and he even gave people loans. He was mamish, a golden younger man. He had good midas and he learned Taylor and he did mitzvahs and he said, the Abish did Oisigavim. And these two people are neighbors. So it's a Matzah Shabbos. And they go and go from Shul after Maidiv. I think they tell the Balshemtiv. And these two neighbors meet each other in front of their homes. So one says to the next, Was machst du? So he says to him, Wie kann ich machen? He says, how, how do you expect me to be a whole week amongst Goyim? He shakes his the dead fish. Selling them buttons and thread, and you have to laugh at their jokes, and you have to make it, you have to act like you're interested in their narishkeit, and they're not going to buy from you the, the thread that you need to buy a piece of gefilte fish. He says, I come home Friday, I'm so tired. 
I run straight to the Merchitz. And I come to the show early. And it's impossible for me to stay awake and to hear Avotel. And he laments his life. He says, how am I doing? And then he asked him, how are you? He said, what's my story? How are you? He said, Baruch Hashem. He tells him, I'm a loymed and I'm a lamed. I learn and I teach. And I... But in the course of this exchange, this, this bentera, this lamed, couldn't help but smile at his own good fortune. He thought about his life versus his, this fellow, his neighbor's life, how fortunate he is. And a little smirk, a little smile uh, crossed his lips. And the Basham Tov continues. These two people died and they came to This Poshetesh peddler came to Milo and they took all of his Havedis and there were many and they put them on a scale. On the opposite side of the scale they put the side, the krecht he gave that Matzah Shabbos. And the side that he gave that Matzah Shabbos was heavier than all of his Avedis. When this Ben Teda died, is a Yakum and Lamaila, they put all of his Teda and his mitzvahs and his Tidok and his Maizam Tevim on one side of the scale. And on the opposite side of the scale, they put that smirk. And the smirk was heavier than all of his mitzvahs. This is how the Toldos was Niskara to Chasidus. In other words, the Rachamono Liba boy idea, Azach Sozai Metanemis, was something that the Baal Shem Tev wanted from each person. Obviously, he wanted it from himself, but he wanted it from everybody. Okay, but